So what I wanted to cover in this video was some of the execution restriction capabilities that come with Defender for Endpoint. Now, what we have here is a demo environment. In my demo environment here, you'll see that I have a Windows 10 virtual machine here, which is connected to the domain which I am managing here in the admin portal. Now, if I go into security.microsoft.com, go into endpoints, have a look at the device inventory, you'll see a list of the devices that Defender knows about that I can take actions on. So in this case, the demo machine here is VM01. So we'll, go and we'll have a look at this. You'll see that uh, it is all set up here, Windows 10 uh, up to date. So I'll just minimize these two options here to give us a bit more screen real estate. And you'll notice up the top here that I have this option on the machine page or the device page to isolate the device. Now, before I do that, let me just go to the device here and show you that we can uh, happily get to uh, the internet. So I can log firstly into uh, the Microsoft 365 environment as a user um, that has single sign-on capability. So that is available to us. And if I go to, for example, uh, a generic or a normal website, microsoft.com in this case, you'll see that uh, that all works uh, as expected. Now, the other option that I have set up here is I have set up um, some Azure SMB files. So I've, uh, oops, I've mapped those uh, basically uh, as a network drive here. So you can go in here and uh, see those files. So I have access to you know, normal uh, file share style uh, capabilities here. So that again is all provided and set up and the machine is working as normal. So let us say that we have some concerns that the machine has been compromised or is currently under some sort of security threat. What I can do is I can come into the uh, device page as I've done here and you'll see I have an option here to isolate device. Now if I select that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, basically isolate the device from the network. Now I need to put in a reason to do this. You'll see that I also get the option to uh, isolate um, to allow Outlook, Teams and maybe Skype for Business to run. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to isolate it completely. So I'm going to go in and confirm that. You'll see that the Action Center pops up that this is about to take place. And pretty much immediately you'll see that I get a notification on the device uh, that the networking has been disabled. So this is thanks to the fact that the device has been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. Now, if I open up my browser again, and let's just try and, for example, refresh this page, what we'll see that that has uh, failed, that has been blocked again. If I refresh this, you'll see that that has failed as well. So I have been isolated uh, from uh, the internet. If I go and have a look at Outlook, for example, so I had Outlook already up and running. Uh, again, what we'll find here is that uh, this will be uh, you know, isolated uh, from the environment. If you look down here, you'll see now that it is now reporting as being disconnected. So again, it has isolated not only the browser, but also uh, Outlook, any of that traffic has been isolated. Now, if we go and have a look in here and have a look at our um, SMB files here that were mapped, you'll see we've got a little red X there. And if I click on it, you'll see that I have uh, no access to that. So again, that has been isolated and that would apply to any on-prem um, links and uh, mappings as well. So effectively, this device is now isolated. It cannot talk to anything outside this device. Now, even though the machine is isolated, I can still go in here if I need to, and I can initiate a live response session. So that's going to give me a command prompt capability to just the machine that is limited to this portal. So I can still do some management. I can do troubleshooting, gather information as well using this uh, live response session and that will happen even though the machine is uh, isolated. Now to remove isolation again I go to the device page here and you'll see I have an option here to release from isolation so again I need to provide a reason uh, for the isolation to be removed so I'm just going to put something generic in there and confirm. Once again I will get information here on the action center You'll see that I also get the capability to cancel the action if I want, and the release has uh, been submitted. Now, all of these actions you can find over here in a history. So if we go into actions and submissions, go under action center, 
you'll see that uh, all the items here appear under the history uh, action here, right? So you'll see here uh, that all of the history regarding the device, the isolation, the live responses and so on is uh, mentioned there. So again, what I've done here is I've gone into the device inventory, I've gone into the machine in question, and then what I've done is I've selected the option to isolate the device, and then when I finish, I select the option to release the device. Now the device has uh, again been uh, removed from the isolation. Let's go in and just verify that we do have uh, access to the environment. So let's go to the portal here, uh, and you can see that we've now got access again because we have removed that uh, isolation. All right, so if we go into Outlook, you'll see Outlook again uh, has uh, been uh, updated and it's updating and is now connected to Exchange. If I go into my SMB files, again, we should see that they are uh, all connected as expected. So the idea here is we can isolate uh, a device that may have a security concern on it. You can do any troubleshooting, uh, any remote work on that using the live response uh, capability uh, inside you know that environment in the Defender console there so that's all in security.microsoft.com now another option we've got for device isolation here which is probably not as restrictive as isolating the device is the ability to restrict app execution so again we can go into the device inventory we go in and select the device in question once again this time VM01 again so I'll just minimize this and that so we get some more screen real estate. Now up in the top right hand corner here under the ellipses, in this case, you'll still have an option here to restrict app execution. Now if we read this, you'll see that this restricting app execution will prevent applications that are not signed by Microsoft from running. So let's go in and set that. And that will again be recorded in our action center. If we go and have a look at our device, you'll see here that the devices uh, is now restricted and we are only able to run Microsoft uh, software here. So let us go in and firstly check that things like our browser, which in this case is Edge. So Edge is able to uh, execute, is able to browse normally uh, as expected. Now if we go in and for example, run our Outlook. So if we go in and run Outlook, we expect this also to be able to connect because this is a Microsoft application that is signed uh, by Microsoft. So we're going to get that capability. Now, what we've done with this restrict app execution here is basically prevent uh, third party or non Microsoft apps uh, from running. So you see here, Outlook has connected to Exchange as expected. An example of this is Putty. So I have uh, putty.exe here. This is not a Microsoft app. It is not signed by Microsoft. So if I double click on that, you'll see now that we get this app uh, restriction capability coming to the fore. Now that app restriction capability is provided by Windows Defender Application Control, WDAC. Uh, and you'll see here that it is now unable to execute and any non Microsoft applications will be prevented from running. The idea behind that is to say that you know Microsoft applications are known, certified, verified. Anything else uh, may be the source of the security concern, so we can isolate that again uh, using the console here. So if we go back in and we want to remove this, again, what we do is we go back into the device, we go into the option again to remove app restrictions, we select that, uh, we need to provide again a reason why we're removing that, we confirm that, that will appear again in our action centers. So again, remember that action center is located over here on the left hand side under action center, we'll get a list uh, under the history option here of everything that has taken place uh, on that device. All right, and let us go and have a look at our device here. All right, so again, this may take a moment or two for that to uh, actually be removed, but let's try this, run that, and you'll see that Putty does actually, actually execute. So the isolation of the device and also the restrict apps, app execution is capable because we have onboarded this device to Defender for Endpoint and we are then able to initiate both of those restrictions 
thanks to the console here at security.microsoft.com going into the device inventory and then selecting the device and then in the top right hand corner selecting either to isolate the device that remove all connections uh, to the device except directly to the management console here uh, in Defender for Endpoint and the other option we've got is to restrict app execution that will prevent any non-Microsoft apps from running on the devices. Now that's really handy if we want to go in and do some troubleshooting or prevent some sort of outbreak or security uh, concern we have on those devices. And again, the important thing here is the device needs to be onboarded uh, to uh, Defender for Endpoint first before we can achieve that. But that's a great way to again be able to not only isolate uh, any security concerns that may be on the device but also go in uh, and potentially you know troubleshoot them and find that and remember that both of these still allow the ability to do a live response session from uh, the Defender for Endpoint admin console here. Thank you very much for watching the video.